been so many years, but there you go. And you had actually just posted mm -hmm. this beautiful sort of, uh, I think it was a sunset, not a sunrise yeah, sun, in uh, Tucson back when, uh, you know, we were living in Arizona and of course some of the most glorious uh, sunsets and sunrises uh, is our, you, you, you can find in Southern Arizona, actually throughout the Southwest. So, oh, but, uh, but that was just making me wax nostalgic. <laughs> it came up literally now, uh, Facebook um, send you a reminder to, that this happened. It just came up, oh, there you are. it happened six years ago yesterday. <laughs> Man. So yeah, brilliant. Okay. Um, it's uh, it's it's fantastic to have you on, have, have you on here. I must say, you do look like you're um, possibly in heaven, maybe or something. It's all white behind you, very very clean, and uh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Oh well, th well, th yeah, thank you. Well, I I don't even have any of the uh, fancy background on my uh, on Zoom uh, because I I'm using a, a beta version or a beta to to translate a beta version of Zoom, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, kind of wreaking havoc with my. Uh, my graphic processing unit. So <laughs> I, w I might actually normally have something of an artificial halo. This one uh, <laughs> it would be a natural one, if that's even possible for me. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, boy, typically most people need a digital restraining order uh, when they, after they've seen <laughs> my ugly head. No, uh, no, 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 no. If, you know, actually, I do need a haircut, though. So thank you for, for reminding me. I'll tell Tanya. <laughs> My long-suffering, uh, much better half, uh, uh, who's uh, just downstairs right now, she'll have to uh, do that uh, uh, this evening. So oh, there goodness. we are. Well, I had to have a screen on because it's too untidy behind me. Um, but anyway, um, please, let's kick off. Let's talk a little bit about diabetes. I know we've talked a little bit sure. earlier on about songs, um, favorite songs and songs to do with diabetes and what have you. Um, but on a serious note, just how big a problem in your, in your mind is diabetes globally and you know, obviously closer to home for you guys over in the US. Yeah, well, diabetes in general is, uh, it, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's an, we're in the middle of an epidemic right now, of course, mm. with, with uh, as we speak, peri-pandemic um, because of uh, uh, COVID. But, uh, you know, diabetes is an epidemic. Uh, we have, we, in the United States alone, there are about 32 million people Mm. Uh, with with diabetes, uh, um, on top of that, there are uh, uh, another. Uh, there are about twice as many, at least, mm. um, that have what we call pre-diabetes or impaired glucose homeostasis. So there are there's over 100 million people in the United States alone uh, with, that are at risk or actually have frank uh, diabetes. So we take that uh, and we then and then we move farther out in my part of the world, if we go into the UK, you know uh, the numbers there, you know the numbers uh, throughout uh, Europe. My One of my mentors and friends is Andrew Bolton, and he's the president of the International Diabetes Federation, and uh, he will tell you now uh, that there's more than a half billion now people with mm -hmm. diabetes around the world, uh, even with the most conservative uh, numbers. That number continues mm -hmm. to grow. It's not shrinking uh, around the world. And that's just diabetes, not even the complications uh, associated um, yeah. with diabetes. And I think you're well aware of many of those. Absolutely. Uh, and what you just said, I've, I've been talking about that on most of the Facebook Lives, actually, about the pre-diabetes and the fact that in, in the US, the IDF anyway, they reckon, reckon that 7% of them actually know they've got pre-diabetes. That's all, just 7%, um, which is crazy because I've been saying, you know, pre-diabetes, it's just a point, you know, pre-diabetes is a point on a scale, diabetes is a point on a scale, you can still develop the problems before, or some of the problems. That's exactly, it is, it's a, it's a spectrum, and, and, uh, and there are um, people that, uh, you know, can live many, many years with, uh, as you well know, I'm preaching to convert here, um, with uh, pre-diabetes, um, and uh, in many cases still have, they can suffer so many of the complications um, that people with frank diabetes might actually have with, with and, and so it's nothing, it's not trivial at all. Uh, this is something that uh, you know, bringing this down into a manageable normal level definitely reduces the risk for complications. Yeah, absolutely. Talking of complications, you've 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 coined the term. I think it was. I'm 
I think it was you guys, diabetic foot or diabetic limb salvage. Um, please share what you actually mean by that. Yeah, well, the uh, I mean, we, we use the term salvage. I think it, it almost seems, uh, uh, you know, chest thumping and uh, especially in this era of testosterone, uh, you know, ha ha induced a kind of chest thumpery. Um, and so we, I mean, but, but in fact, I mean, we, we also will, uh, we like to use the term preservation. It, it sounds a lot nicer, even when you talk about teams like limb preservation teams, mm -hmm. um, and such, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that, um, you know, there's, there's now an amputation, as you well know, um, every 20 seconds around the world. And that's ticking the wrong way right now, depending on where in the world you are, um, amputations, the, uh, the sheer number of them um, are increasing mm -hmm. um, worldwide, both with the increased number of people with diabetes um, and also in many parts of the world, just uh, because the prevalence or the proportion of people with complications are going up. So the, the numbers are ticking uh, in the wrong way. Um, and, but the good news is that we can get in front of these uh, complications because what causes an amputation is not some act of God. Um, in, in almost every case, these are ultimately preventable. And how does that happen? Uh, well, someone uh, with diabetes, generally speaking, um, has to develop uh, uh, a, there are really steps, just maybe five or six steps. I don't know if you want to, you want to go through the five or six steps? Absolutely, can, yes. Let's do it. I'm all in. Well, yes. let's, 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 let's do it. Can you have a little sip? Chin chin, look at you. Uh, so, uh, so, so the first step um, is, of course, you know, developing diabetes, and we've already talked about this. That that the great news is is that if you have prediabetes, you can reduce the risk of sort of zero converting into diabetes just by staying in good glucose control and being active. All the things you know how to do, you talk about it and you preach constantly. And also, if you're in a certain range, you could go on metformin, which is a, a just a, a wonder drug for the longest time and doing so many things, uh, that actually also can further dramatically reduce your risk of sort of converting, if you will, from from what we call impaired glucose homeostasis, prediabetes to diabetes. So that's the first step. The, the second step is if you do have diabetes, um, the next step to developing an amputation is the first thing you have to do is to develop neuropathy, generally speaking. Now, neuropathy uh, is... Uh, essentially, um, ultimately, one can lose the gift of pain. Like one of my mentors, mentors, uh, my friend uh, Andrew Bolton, uh, his mentor uh, John Ward coined, uh, oh, I should say, coined the term. I'll talk about that in a minute. But actually, the gift of pain was coined by another uh, a mentor of mine, not Bolton or Ward, but actually, uh, uh, but, but but actually Paul Brand. Mm -hmm. And I have so many British. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, mentors. I don't even know what it is. And I even mentioned Billy Bragg at the beginning. Say, even, yeah. Billy's not my mentor, but, <laughs> but he might as well have been. Uh, but but uh, they, I'm something of an Anglophile. What's going on? Uh, but the, the 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 bottom line is, though, um, Paul, Paul Brand used to say pain is a gift. It's a gift that mm. that people don't want, um, but it, it tells you when there's a problem. We're, we're all conditioned to respond to pain. If mm. if um, if, if my shoulder hurts, I'm going to go in and see a shoulder doctor, right? Um, and uh, uh, or uh, if I were to uh, you know, have stomach pain, I'd want to go see my GP or something or other, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's that usually that, that causes someone to come in. Imagine if you didn't have that gift and slowly that is removed with, with diabetes and neuropathy. Um, and it happens so slowly that people don't notice it. it and it's like watch it's not like it, 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 it's a lot slower than watching pain in your eye and it's just it's glacial um, and so you know we are really good at emergencies not not only in medicine but just in life mm. most of the time right there's an emergency we hear a noise we react to it we there's a there, there's danger somewhere uh, you know uh, there's you know some sort of traumatic condition we're usually good at dealing with these sorts of things and and in medicine we're often, unfortunately, good at, at things like trauma, uh, secondary to conflict. Uh, but what we're not good at as human beings 
and uh, as if we're talking about policymakers um, or if we're talking about clinicians, we're not very good at dealing with slow you know, problems that sort of sneak up on us. Mm. And that's why diabetes, as this chronic disease, is the most sneaky, uh, just silent and um, sinister syndrome because people have silent problems. They have silent heart attacks. And because of feet uh, and neuropathy in feet, they have silent, you know, foot attacks. And you know this, you've, you've seen this. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that's the second step, neuropathy. After that, um, people can literally wear a hole in their foot, just as we would wear a hole in a sock or a shoe. And that hole is called an ulcer, a diabetic foot ulcer or DFU. And that happens every uh, about oh, uh, 1.2 seconds now. Wow. Um, around uh, the world, astonishingly. And then after that, typically people have to get some kind of infection. That's the next step after the diabetes, the neuropathy, the ulcer. Then usually uh, there's some kind of infection. Uh, uh, and in addition to the infection, what also can increase the risk for amputation concomitantly is what we call peripheral artery disease or PAD. And a very severe form is called chronic limb threatening ischemia, or CLTI. Um, and when you add that on to an infect, infection, then uh, it dramatically increases the risk for you losing, uh, uh, losing your foot. And so that is why there is an amputation now every 20 seconds um, around the world. And But the good news, Peter, as, again, you well know, is that we can stop that problem along each one of those uh, six or so steps. Yeah. Um, and it's not a fait accompli that someone's going to get that amputation. And yeah. and that's why most amputations um, are preventable. Yeah, the the figure that goes around is about 85% that they reckon, isn't it, that are preventable. And a lot of that start, starts really with somebody with pre-diabetes trying to sort the blood sugars out. <laughs> Um, it does. It does. It's, and and it's, it seems like we're we're getting so far in front of something, but it, it's true. It is absolutely true. Mm. Before I uh, forget, by the way, I had uh, Stella Vig on the show yesterday, and uh, she said well, to send her love to you. Oh, Stella Vig, boy, look at that. That's uh, yeah, the 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 pride of Croydon. Absolutely, yes. You know, I live in Croydon as well. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, that's I know good. Croydon because Croydon's close to Gatwick. Back when I used to fly into Gatwick, so there we are. Yeah, back in the day, eh? <laughs> back in the day when we used to fly in airplanes. Yeah, you know Tina's over in the um, in uh, Caribbean at the moment. It, oh, is she really? Yeah, she's over there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> send send my send my regards from uh, beautiful Studio City here. Okay, Alex, will do. Um, okay, so. Um, Thanks for sharing those steps there. I think that's really helpful for the listeners. And by the way, listeners, if you, if you did miss Stella's show, then you can obviously look at it on Facebook there and, yep. uh, and uh, hear more about the, uh, the vascular side of things because she, she is a vascular surgeon. Um, okay. Um, I think one of the, the, the most powerful analogies that I've heard you talk about, you're the best person at talking about this, I think, so um, is the whole thing about how somebody who has got a, a diabetic foot also a wound, um, how it relates in, in many ways to the, the analogy of cancer. Um, and there's, the, there's, that, there's that statistic as well, which I, I, I shared at the beginning of this um, month long event, this keep your feet month, um, about the fact that if you had three people in the room, uh, one with a diabetic foot ulcer, one with, a, um, with breast cancer, and one with prostate cancer, um, the chances of them not being with you in five years' time. Um, so if we just wind back to when we were sitting in your office uh, six years ago, so let's call it five years ago, uh, if we had three other people in there with those things, um, it's really shocking to know that actually the person with breast cancer, which, which is shocking enough, there's um, an 80% chance that they'd still be here today. Prostate cancer, I think it's a 60% chance they'd still be here. But the person with the DFU, there's only a diabetic foot ulcer for those listeners. Um, there's only um, a 20% chance that they would be with us. 
Um, obviously, not just because they've got an ulcer, it's because of the morbidity and comorbidities going on, but that is really, really shocking. But I know that your, your analogy of, of cancer relating to the actual foot wound is, is really powerful, and I think people can really 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 need to learn from that so please please share. right well well you've just sort of explained it and actually um for people with you know these data have you know continues con you continue to change over the years uh, and but you've met you've summarized it beautifully you do better, fact, so i want to hear it from you <laughs> well 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 in fact in fact for for cancer now for all cancer um you know five-year mortality um if we look at all of them with the most recent data we just actually published this um maybe uh, just a, uh, a couple of months ago. Mm. Uh, but if we look at all cancer, it's about 30, 31 uh, percent. And and for most of these cancers, the thank God, the um, uh, mortality rate is actually dropping. And it has been steadily dropping over the last couple of generations. Uh, mortality for diabetes related complications um, like uh, Peripheral artery disease, as we mentioned, especially CLTI, chronic limb threatening ischemia, um, and diabetic foot ulcers, and uh, a, a, and uh, other problems associated with the foot and and amputation, um, are uh, uh, at least as bad as they were five years ago. Mm. Um, and so we have a lot of work to do. Um, and, and we are, and I think if you go to certain teams that are dealing with this a lot, uh, limb preservation teams, whether they be in the UK, whether they're uh, in the rest of the EU, whether they are uh, in anywhere around the world, uh, and uh, we, what we see is that when you put these teams together, good things happen in that there tend to be fewer high-level amputations, mm -hmm. thereby reducing that figure associated with morbidity and mortality. Uh, and there tend to be more limb sparing kinds of procedures done. Um, and uh, people tend to live out uh, more active, high quality lives because of that, uh, ostensibly. And so we see this now at units now around the world. And I'm happy to say as well in the United States, uh, there are teams now uh, that have been uh, proliferating. And, and what's super cool, actually, I don't even know if you know this, but, um, you know, we've had our, our big, uh, you know, diabetic foot meeting, uh, like every other meeting, it's been virtual. Um, uh, but uh, the, that meeting is called DEF CON or the Diabetic Foot Conference. And uh, we had our uh, DEF CON line version. And out of that, this year, we have uh, just launched a, uh, a, 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 a society, a not-for-profit called the American uh, Limb Preservation Society or ALPS. Yeah, uh, and uh, Alps now, while it is an American uh, enterprise, it's extremely uh, uh, international, but it's designed to be the U.S.-based uh, organ, if you will, for the, uh, for, uh, the international working group on this subject. Um, and so, but what's so cool is that that team or that, that society now is designed to help to be a bridge, be an interdisciplinary bridge between clinicians, uh, between the Stella Viggs and the Peter Altons of the world um, and others to bring them together to generate uh, not only teams now, but the next generation mm -hmm. of teams. And I'll tell you, I could not be more excited with the people that we have, uh, you know, playing a role. And mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, DEF CON is going to be the official meeting for Alps, and it's just going from strength to strength. Okay. So how do I join? <laughs> oh, my. oh, just oh, go on. Oh, well, well, you can go on. I, I should write it down. I, the, I, it's, uh, what is it? Limbpreservationsociety.org. Okay. Limbpreservationsociety.org. In fact, I'll type it in your thing. Limbpreservation. Uh, I'm doing this. It's the most boring thing on, on, uh, on, on uh, Zoom. Uh, uh, society.org. I just sent it to you. There it goes. Okay, thanks. Uh, I don't think there are any typos or I had to buy a vowel or anything. There it is. <laughs> cool. Okay, dogs. Um, that sounds really good. Really good. Um, I'll definitely uh, look into that and and, uh, and get involved. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think it's what, um, you know, 
the international side of it, I mean, there's so many countries that don't even have podiatry in them as well. It's just like, it's crazy. Most, most don't. Yeah. But what's cool there, and that this is, again, part of the remit uh, of what we're talking about now, is you see some countries now developing mm. um, societies and specialties. Uh, uh, notably, I mean, there, there are a number of countries that are doing this. Most interestingly and notably is uh, Romania that's been working on this as well. You should uh, interview uh, Norina Gavan. Nor yes. I'm going to write five percent. Uh, I, 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 I know. I'm, co I'm connected with her. Yeah. Oh, superb! Yeah. I just yeah. typed her name in. Yeah. She is spectacular. She yeah. is uh, basically the uh, William the Conqueror, if you will, <laughs> or the George Washington. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say. You know what? Forget William, it. I'm not going to say William, William the Conqueror. Conqueror. Forget, forget him. <laughs> I'm going to say Alfred. No, no, no. I'm going to say Alfred the Great. Or like, uh, how's that? Uh, uh, that's, right. what, that's, what, that's what I'll do. I'll say Alfred the Great, because I'm going to bring you back to your Angles, Don't your Saxons, and your, <laughs> down there, uh, as it were, in, uh, it, in England. But uh, she, she is that. And it's, um, it, it's, it's exciting, um, actually, to see what's happening in, uh, uh, in Romania now. Cool. Um, of all places, uh, she you know, sees a problem, and, she, and she's not a, uh, a, a clinician herself. She's a, a scientist, mm. and she's been able to uh, create this entire specialty where one didn't exist before. So that's yeah. awesome, too. That is. Wow. Well done to her. Um, future success. Uh, I know you're very techie. Um, I had Bijan on earlier in the week, and he—that was his topic was the technology side of things. Oh, that's great! Oh, good. Uh, then he probably told you all about all that stuff. He told it. Yeah, I, I'm just interested in hearing from you. What 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 are the um, what are the the, the key things in your mind that um, are either on the market already or that are close to possibly yeah. coming that you think are going to yeah. be game changers? Oh, sure. Well, look, I think the most game changer of all now we've had now around. Forever, and that's just this. It's just our, you know, our, by the way, this is an iPhone 12 Pro now because, of course, I always get one the first day and everything. <laughs> I got like a, I got new gadgets all around, but, but it's just whatever phone you have, um, that is, you know, where when we were talking even five years ago, yeah. uh, when we first met six, um, back then, uh, you know, it was still a little exotic for one of our patients to have a smartphone, right? Mm. Uh, it, you know, maybe only, I'd say half of them had one. Mm. Uh, you know, now, um, nearly 80 to 90% yeah. um, of our patients have them. Even folks that are not of significant means, you know, uh, are, have a smartphone. And if they don't have a smartphone, then they even have a feature phone or, or even a flip phone. But what we've been doing, I'll just tell you some super, it's kind of a mixture of uh, today's tech, but uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do to add tech to it. Because I know you've already spoken with Bijan and he's probably already told you about smart bath mats, yeah, we magic about that. carpets, yeah. magic insoles, smart, you know, other wearables, even injectables and super cool things like that. But let's not talk about those unless you want to. I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to talk to you about a foot selfie. Uh, so this is Absolutely. a thing. So so we have, uh, it sounds kind of odd and weird, uh, but so but um, for the longest time, we have asked our patients, uh, you know, if you see a problem, then just take a picture and text it to us or email it to us. Um, and say maybe about a year or, or two ago, um, one of our a very uh, clever young uh, medical student, uh, Mark Swerdlow, um, he's a now now a third year, but when he was a first year medical student, he was in our clinic, uh, and he saw me telling the patients to do this. He said, "Hey, what if we made like a little platform? I could like print it out almost for free on a 3D printer, and we could send it to patients, and then make a little app, um, and then they could just say yes and have a photo taken consistently." So that created this thing now, which we do every single day now. We have our patients sending in foot selfies, um, yeah. and um, it's they're very consistent. And every Monday at 7 a.m. Uh, local, you can tune in if you want, actually. Maybe you can't because of confidentiality, but I'm sure our patients would love it. Uh, we actually review uh, just uh, uh, about – we can review like 50 or 60 people. It's so fast. In, in like 15 minutes. And we know all these patients are like our family. And, and 
not a week goes by where we do not identify a problem and either prevent a problem from getting much worse or prevent entire hospitalizations mm. or actually have people sometimes uh, into, like we just did this week, uh, we've actually had people uh, that actually had to come into hospital because of a problem that would not have been identified were it not for these foot selfies. And that's free. Wow. Uh, it, 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 there's no cost there. Yeah. Now, taking that another step forward, uh, uh, your uh, friends from uh, uh, up uh, in the Northwest uh, in, uh, in Manchester um, and uh, the Manchester Amputation Reduction Strategy, MARS, uh, on, mm -hmm. on, that, on that end, um, but also on the uh, Manchester Metropolitan University, uh, on the other part of uh, Oxford Road there uh, in, in Manchester is uh, uh, Moy Hun Yap, and they have been working together along with uh, Oracle, of all people, on developing an AI-based algorithm where you can take a picture and send it off and have it automatically identify a problem even without human involvement. And I think what we're going to be seeing soon, uh, and when I say soon, I mean just in the matter of probably a couple of years, we're gonna probably see sort of hybrid kind of chimeric models where you have um, the, a, a, you know, a computer with you know, deep learning algorithms being able to help a clinician uh, like you or like me, and more importantly, our patient um, identify a problem before it ever happens just through a regular, uh, you know, smartphone. And that, uh, um, I think, is going to be a thing at very, very low cost. Yeah. Or in our case, no cost. Yeah. And, and I think as well, I mean, that, that they're lucky enough to have you to communicate with and, and obviously hopefully that will spread further but even if they haven't just you know invest in five pounds dollars whatever in a selfie stick um to take a picture of their own foot if they can't feel it uh, well well um, well peter i'll give you an example i have had i had today i've had patients and i'm not violating any confidentiality here but i've had patients uh uh send me messages from with 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 their a foot selfie yeah. uh, from Iraq, from Pakistan, from uh, the uh, uh, Comoros Islands, and and from um, <laughs> where else? Today, I'm just thinking today. Oh my God! Uh, from Buenos Aires. And you, still, Aires. you still have time yeah. to give up some time for us. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, I mean, but that, and so what I'm doing is, you know, for some, I'm trying to get them close to friends and colleagues yeah. that are taking care of these patients even even in iraq we have friends and colleagues and but it's obviously very complicated the same in obviously in pakistan these guys are in the northwest tribal province in the area but it's uh, uh in peshawar but we're trying to try to get people uh, together with clinicians that care about the problem and we can because it's a worldwide network and yeah. and you know we're moving forward in this area yeah brilliant Thank you uh, for sharing that. That's that's, that's brilliant. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, tech that's here today, and you mentioned some tech that's going to be coming, the AI stuff. Um, in a year's time, I hope to have a second October and, uh, and keep your feet month. But sadly, by then, no shit. Sadly, by then, 1.6 million more people will have had an amputation at that rate that we talked about earlier. Um, obviously, some have got chronic issues, which. Uh, uh, will need intervention by the likes of yourself and what have you. Um, but what, what can people, if any listeners now, what can they do to best minimize or at least manage their risks um, to avoid yeah. some of those complications, do you think? Yeah. Just to... Well, that's a great question. Uh, and by the way, it's an easy thing to ta answer when we're just talking like this, even mm -hmm. transatlantically, uh, and it's hard to do in real life. But this is, a pr this is pretty easy, actually. Um, if you did nothing but just a couple of things, uh, the first is make sure you see your podiatrist um, at least once a year, because if you see him or her, then he or she can do a rapid um, assessment and, and gauge your risk and put you into a certain risk stratum. Uh, and that is true within NHS. It's true in the United States. This can be done. We had written up what we call a three-minute foot exam, which is well-validated. Um, and that can be done very, very quickly. Um, and then if you need more testing, that'll happen. 
And if they need to have you back more often, they will based on your risk stratum. So that's number one. If you see just that person, that podiatrist, along with another member of the foot team, or excuse me, of the diabetes team, it could be your GP or whomever, your risk for amputation in the next six years, actually it's perfect, it's what we were talking yeah. <laughs> your risk for amputation over the next six years goes down anywhere from on the low end, on the, on the floor of risk uh, uh, reduction, uh, 19% to on the high end, um, about two thirds. Wow. So that by its, and this is long term reduction. So mm. if we were talking about a 5% risk reduction uh, year over year with, with a, with a drug, uh, any drug, that would be a blockbuster drug. We're talking wow. 19% <laughs> to two thirds. And that number even goes up higher depending on other studies that you look at. So that's number one. That's the one thing you can do. Just get to your foot doctor along with your other member of the diabetes team. So the other thing you could do is just every day if you can. Now, this is the thing I, you, know, you should do every day, uh, but it's not that hard, but you just have to get into it. And that is quite literally just knock your socks off and look at your feet and just like you comb your hair, you brush your teeth, just check your feet. And if you can't check them, if you can't reach down there or see them, um, then look, have your significant other or uh, whoever else you love around the house, have a look. Um, and if you do that, um, then you'll be, you'll be able to alert that GP or that podiatrist or whomever it is on the team um, of any problems. And you'll ask, well, what do I look for? Uh, a, a Dr. Armstrong, and the answer is, if you're looking at your feet every day, you would know exactly. what to look for because it would be something different yeah. uh, than, than the day before. But obvious things like, you know, swelling that was unusual, maybe redness, maybe an ingrown nail, maybe a little sore, maybe even, God forbid, some bleeding into the sock or stocking, uh, um, or anything that bothers you, just get a hold of your uh, your podiatrist to your GP, and that alone, along with what I've just told you before, will dramatically reduce your risk. Mm. Nothing fancy, nothing high tech. Talking of which, you just remind me actually talking about knocking your socks off and what have you. Um, one, of, one of my favorite artists, we talked earlier on about music um, before coming live. Um, one of my favorite artists, actually, I confess, is from, uh, <laughs> no, I'm proud of it, uh, is from the 80s. Um, Adam and the Ants. Adam Ant. Look at you, uh, man. Adam Ant. <laughs> I, I, oh, I've had great. the White Stripe on before. Stand and Deliver. Stand and Deliver, yeah. But his first album, which uh, when he was in his punk era before that. Yeah. Was oh, called, yeah. I loved it. <laughs> was called Dirk Wears White Socks. I know, I know this. Okay. I know cool. this. Look at you. Well <laughs> done, Peter Alton. How many people know that? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, uh, the, the next two, two, three years later was, uh, when was strip? Uh, anyway, keep going. All right. Anyway, that, 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 yeah. It was well, it was well after that. Yeah. You're right about that. Gosh, damn. Yeah. Um, I, I requested that on the radio actually on the call, on a call in, uh, but for anyway, it's a whole different story. Long time ago. <laughs> you guys, we just lost uh, all our listeners there. <laughs> That's right. It was a, <laughs> all of you. Was a, there you go. It was a Valentine's Day request. So, <laughs> so the point I know you're aware you of this. The point, the point of me mentioning that is, of course, um, that yeah, you know, if somebody's where, if somebody has got neuropathy, if, if you are listening now and you've got some neuropathy, um, you won't necessarily know that you've actually got a wound on the bottom of your foot. You know, I had a chap in who had a carpet tack went right That's through correct. his slipper into his foot. He hadn't got a clue it was in his foot. Um, but had he worn white socks, when he took those socks off, he would have seen the blood or, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. that can really just a very, very yeah, simple Yeah, obviously thing. white socks are, are a good tip if you, if you can, you know, if you, uh, if you can swing it, you know, white socks are probably better than black socks. But, you know, if you're wearing dress socks as well, just knock the frigging socks off yeah. and just, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and just get a look because you'll, you'll be surprised at what you might find. Uh, in your shoe if you just tap the top you know sometimes something will uh, come loose there yeah cool listen i know we've uh we've we've uh spent a long time a lot of your time and i'm sure that any minute now the wife is going to come in and sort of you won't, won't grab you by the hair but <laughs> by the neck or something um what one last thing um 
next year, next October, I, I definitely want to do Keep Your Feet Month again. And um, I, I, I've been trying to think of something big. I mean, I, I did this one really at the last minute. Um, and I want you to f just to maybe put our heads together, maybe. And, and I'm not expecting an answer right now, but maybe if we can think of, you might have an answer straight away, I don't know, um, of a way that we can do something. I'm going to use an illustration, okay, as to what I want us to do, okay? So, what have I got here? You, okay. You know what this is, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that is? I, oh, hey, there uh, you are. There, yeah. That's an LP. An uh, LP. For limb preservation. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, uh, yeah, it was an LP. Uh, okay. Oh, my God, you've just broken it's, the record. It's, uh, it's just broken a record, yes. So, I think that next year we ought to try to do something like that and you know aim for a world record somehow I, whether covid is going to allow it i don't know but um viewers if you've got any ideas david if you've got any ideas of yeah something you know what i wanted to do and we were talking about this and we've never done it well uh but i remember talking about this like 10 or 15 years ago uh in sydney um and and uh i think the Amer the australian podiatry association was thinking and we, we had talked about uh taking um a bunch of mannequin legs mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I know this sounds weird and crazy but these mannequin legs and just stacking them up uh, and uh, outside there of their capital uh, in Canberra but imagine if we could just get a bunch of those somehow uh, and put them together maybe the largest ever mm. you know stack of mannequin legs I don't think there's I'm sure we'll break whatever record there is I don't think there is <laughs> one right now no, yeah. but, but imagine that if we could just say, you know, there were this many amputations today uh, in London mm. or in, you know, in Newcastle or, or uh, you know, or in Edinburgh or in Birmingham or in Cardiff, you know, and, uh, and, and or, or even throughout the UK, maybe Diabetes UK, we could do it. Maybe we could do it collectively in two different areas. I, wouldn't that be cool? That'd be cool. Wow. Yeah. It'd be a big pile in America. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, sure Jamie, Jamie Oliver, you know the chef? Mm. I'm pretty sure it was him. He, yeah. did, so, he did do something like that. Um, did he really? He had, <laughs> he had a stack of... Um, I'm sure it was him. Yeah, when he was trying to do the, um, the um, sugar tax. He, really? He had, he, had a, he had a pile of mannequin legs in the, in the back of the, uh, the room. I'm certain he did. Pretty really? Sure. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome that yeah. it actually happened. I mean, this was a discussion but, we had, you know, so many years ago. We're talking, this might be 20 years ago already. He, but, he stole uh, it. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, this is great. Well, that's yeah. wonderful if it is. Yeah. We can maybe look this up and maybe just try to uh, do it one better. Yeah, no, that, absolutely. Great. Thank, thanks for that. I, I, I love that because you don't even have to social well, distance. We'll I mean, I think social distance and do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can all right. be together. Maybe we could do it along with Alps. Absolutely, yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. It's not an undefeated thing. This is a uh, international that, 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 joint, there, there, there joint venture. Cool. That's right. Well, yeah. hey, well it could be a uh, undefeated. Then you can make an Alps like like a little. You can make a little mountain out of the out of the uh, mannequin legs too. Uh, <laughs> but but that, that's awesome. Great. Okay. Well, I am just so grateful for your time. You're always so generous with it. Um, we won't take up any more of it. Uh, I'm sure that whatever you've said today will have helped people. There will be people directly listening who've got diabetes who would have been helped. There'll be practitioners who have listened and thought, yes, I'm going to take it to another level. So thank you so much. Yeah, listen, uh, Peter Elton, th this is just an absolute pleasure. And you're just doing, this is such important work you're doing. Congratulations, man, for real. That just uh, onward and upward, as we say. Absolutely. Keep safe and keep well. Take care, man. Okay. And be well. Okay, David, thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Yeah. All right, man. Bye-bye.